Okay, Ruth, it's um, been, been a while since you first met with uh, um, Paul Forward, the head of the major crimes investigation, and he promised you back in October that he was going to reinvestigate the, the case, have a look at what evidence you and your husband Gary had put to him, and he promised you some sort of time frame in which he would come back to you. We've gone through some of the deadlines that he set, or the suggested times when he would come back to you. Um, what, what's your reaction to that? Yeah, um, I think that um, it's, it's good news in a way about him taking his time, and that it's kind of positive in a way, but in the end, I find it's rather awkward because the evidence was always in their files. And if I hadn't have um, stood up and said something, they'd be still in. They'd still be in the files, and nobody would see them, especially the police. You know. You you so, you, you, you say the evidence. Um, I mean, I've seen um, probably several thousand pages of that evidence, um, but that's only a small portion of what we call evidence. What we're actually talking about is the uh, statements made at the time by um, a range of people from witnesses to um, to police officers to social workers um, to everything now you've got sight of all of that as you would have been entitled to years ago and you only recently i know got that um, and you've only got a portion of it but the conclusions that you've drawn from looking at that um, has made you feel angry depressed um, irritated Annoyed? What sort of feelings when you've been through it yourself with with your husband Gary? I I get very angry and very annoyed because um, the bad publicity actually come from the police and social services. Um, they were telling the media all sorts of things which wasn't true, and I've got evidence to prove that. Well, the evidence again is are are the are the, are the conflicts within the statement? Yeah, there's conflicts in statements. Um, there's one person making two statements within 24 hours of one another. Um, there's people saying um, about they've seen something and then deny it. And There's an interesting bit, one of the bits that I've seen is the, um, is the state of your house where we've seen a police yeah. video that shows it to have taken out the time to show it to be, you know, a, a relatively normal sort of house, a bit, you know, if I might say it, a little bit scruffy or unkempt, but fundamentally everything was in place. There was furniture, there were toys for the kids, there were all the appliances you would expect, there were food in the cupboards, and yet when I've looked at some of the statements, and you've seen some of the statements, that's not what then got portrayed no. as your house being like. Well, no, well, no, exactly. Um, it's been put around that I never fed the kids, I spent all my money on drugs, I'm not bothered feeding the children, which is a lie. Um, the house was as clean as I could could do it with, in circumstances I was in. And um, toys, they always had loads of toys. And I just can't understand why people would say that. Yeah, I've seen it in the files. And it's just total lies. And I think that if you're portray portraying somebody in that way, um, they should get to the truth. And I have got to the truth. I was actually put in the dark. I was actually in the dark. I didn't know nothing about what was happening in the trial, what was happening in trial proceedings. And um, yeah, I was totally in the dark. And now looking at the files, I'm actually astonished at what people have said, really astonished at what people said. And it makes me very angry to, to feel that people would say such awful stuff. Okay, we're, we're, we're back recording this interview in March. Um, one of the bits of evidence that was used against you um, was the allegation that uh, you'd been spotted, um, you know, on the town bridge and dangling uh, Ricky. But I've yet to see any corroboration of that statement. I've yet to see um, the time it meant to have happened. It was almost like uh, it was believed, but there was no other supporting evidence other than the random uh, testimony of one one individual who who's, who'd remembered it according to them it happening. Yeah, well, that's, that's a load of rubbish. Um, at the end of the day, you, if people thought about it properly, it would be impossible to hang a child over over that bridge. And um, 
it was it was said that it was said in July, the ninety two when I moved to Peterborough, but I moved to Peterborough in July ninety two, so and it couldn't have happened and it didn't happen. And yet it became almost written into yeah. the into what well, you might yeah. call the folklore of the case. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I the mean, betrayal of you by the media, and this is really partly what we're, we're looking back at. I mean, you, the betrayal of you by the media, they, they must have been um, uh, encouraged, if you like, or, or briefed to portray you in such a light by others around you. Yes, I think a lot of people got away with a lot of things and there was a, no prosecutions at all. I had a book chucked at me for whatever reason, I don't know, but it was actually the police and social service that spread the rumours and the people that I used to know just added to it thinking that they were clever. But no, there wasn't because 20, late, 20 years later, I've actually found out that, I, well, I knew all along that I was lying, but seeing, that, seeing the statements makes me just say how ridiculous they are, um, especially like the bridge. It's impossible to do that. Why would I do that? One of the other um, uh, interesting uh, elements to all of this was your um, uh, alleged uh, enthusiasm for writing books about um, the perfect murder, your alleged obsession with the occult. Um, I mean, those things, you know, you, you, you don't strike me as a prolific author with the greatest respect. I mean, and I have found and read a statement where you'd written something out and once given it to a social worker to have a look at uh, a book. And it was only later that, that, that the social worker, that, according to one of the statements, actually got frog marched to a car when yes, she released it to realise that she had it, or was told she had it, and, and was told to hand it over. And then she, I don't think she'd actually even read it. It was just no. the notes that you got in a file. Um, I mean, what was that all about? It was, well, basically, um, The Perfect Murder was um, a story which I made up in my head um, so I could do creative writing um, just to busy my time away when the kids were at school. And I finished it and I gave it to Debbie and I turned around and said, well, you know, could you look at it and see what you think? And basically she never looked at it. And then when the police and social services realised that she got it, they tried to use it against me by saying the story was about a little boy or whatever. And it wasn't, it was about a man and a woman and how a man perfectly murdered a woman. And that's simple as that. I was not into the occult, I was into tarot cards, and I was into, um, no, I wasn't even into Stephen King books. I was just into, well, blood and guts, really. I always have done. Does it make you into a murderer, though, does it? When, when books were removed from your house, um, and probably not to go into too much detail, but we've looked at various statements, um, there is, uh, I think, fair to say, um, now quite clearly, uh, some discrepancies as to the, what books were removed, when they were removed, and who actually removed them. Yeah, basically, um, there was a book called Magic, which was given to somebody, given to me from somebody, and it was seized, given an exhibit number, and then later on, um, I think that's when after I got arrested. Um, it, it had another exhibit number and is actually supposed to be placed on the table in my living room but the pictures show different the pictures show there was no book on that table where this police officer said it was that was a discrepancy it so, had two exhibit numbers which it shouldn't have so you know one surrounding the main uh, you know apart from the main allegations that they were made against you, there were lots of all these other bits of detail that you found what presumably you would call substantial holes in, 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 in the arguments against them. Um, why do you think that they were so convinced it was you from the, from the outset that had, had murdered you? Which is, you know, it's, it's quite it's, horrific to be yeah, sitting here, it is. Standing, sitting, sitting next to somebody um, who actually stood trial for, for the murder of a child. And, and that has actually, over the years, um, horrified a lot of people. Yeah, it's, it, it totally destroyed me. And it's, it's very hard to get over a thing like that. But I, I think that at the time, um, the police knew who actually murdered Ricky, but I was a scapegoat, basically. And um, they that's, quite a, that's quite a serious 
allegation to make? Do you think that they knew at the time who did it? Yes, they do. Yes, they did. And 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 it, you you still. I still believe it. So therefore, it. It will come out. You believe that the, the there is within the bundles of evidence yes, sufficient uh, sufficient, uh, sufficient evidence for towards them, these two people to to, to to have a look at other uh, uh, other suspects. Was your um, time then mainly in, when you were arrested then taken up with that? Uh, as opposed to looking at what the social services were going to say against you. Well, yeah, I, I was very surprised at social services because I did work really hard with them, and I. Did. You weren't the, the. I've seen the satellite of the statement. You weren't the easiest of customers. No, I wasn't. But social services are not easy to deal with either. So, but I did work with them, and I'm really horrified at the stuff I've come out with. I really have, because in my job as like I said before. I knew nothing about it. They're saying that I never fed the kids. The kids was a crap hole. Um, but they would have noticed that in the in the run up to to to, to, to Ricky's yeah, disappearance. I mean, yes, there was no documentation to to, no. to, to say all of this. So. No, this all happened after he died. All the allegations started after Ricky died. There was no allegations before. What did I you? So you pleaded guilty um, to to that thinking yes, I did. because you 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 were advised not to. Um, you know that that if you denied that, then you'd have to go through the full, full, uh, full everything, and there was a possibility that you felt that you would get um, found guilty of the murder as well. Um, so your eye was a bit off the ball in regards to the events you admitted to. Because what were you expecting? A slap on the wrist for that? No, I didn't. Ex I didn't expect seven years though. I really didn't. You know, you don't. You don't even get that for murder nowadays. So, no, it was a long sentence for somebody like me that lost a son, lost my three girls, lost my home, lost everything. That destroyed me. And then on top of that, a seven-year sentence didn't go down very well. And you served a lot of that time? Yeah, I did, six years. So, we're back here now, 20-odd years later. You've been back in the public eye for a while, in a sense, um, campaigning to uh, establish what you believe to be the truth about what happened. Um, you have now been taken seriously by um, the major crimes unit who have put a cold case team in to have a, have a look at it. And therefore, it's probably right that we don't deal with any of, of, of the specific bits of the evidence that you say that they will have been investigating. Um, so you're just sitting back now waiting for them to come back to you to say, what would you like to hear from them? I would like to hear from them that they're actually um, making it a live case. So that, because I've, like, forward, like, I've had an email from forward saying he's going to look at the whole case, which I imagine will be the neglect and cruelty and the murder and um, all the allegations from social services and the police. And uh, basically, what really rattles me is the fact that if I hadn't met my husband, Gary, and he, well, not forced me, but he said, whenever I'm ready to deal with this, he'll be, he'll help me all along the way. And um, as we look, once I got the files, and it was really hard to get the files back um, for obvious reasons. And then when my husband looked through them, he said that everything I said for 20 years was all true. And um, we have black and white evidence to prove the fact and the police, I've got no way of getting out of it really because the evidence has always been there. My argument is, why well, did it have to take me 20 years to stand up for myself, for the police to take me seriously, to look at the case and we'll just basically deal with the case. If I hadn't stood up, they'd have never dealt with it. I've, um, I've seen quite a lot of what Gary has um, emailed people and, and, and told people. Um, he can sometimes, I think, it's fair to say, go off the rails a little bit in yes, terms of, of, of what he says. Um, and you, you have to deal with that. Um, probably the reason for that would be that he shares your frustration? or Yes, he does. He, share, he shares my anger and my frustration. Because like he said, um, all, all, all it needed to look at them files was somebody to read English. And it says it all in there, in the files. The lies, the deceit, and the bullcrap. So, in black and white evidence. The head of major crimes, Paul Ford, has, has 
met you back in, in October. Yes, it did. He's kept you in, in the loop in terms of telling you how the inquiry is progressing only to a point. Um, and I know that very recently when you were expecting a, um, a, some correspondence decision by him about the case by the end of March, he then asked for further time? Yes, he did. Um, basically, he's asked, um, asked to have something else done and yeah, he definitely said by May he'll get back to me. But in, in, the, in the great scheme of things though, it doesn't matter how long it takes, as long as we all get to the right conclusion and get the people that did murder Ricky, which is without a shadow of a doubt. So, presume, so presumably you and Gary now have stopped going through files, stopped no, going... Stop, no, stop. we're still constantly going through files. This time it's a child proceedings. And that's to feed into what you hope will be his investigation um, or to um, look at other types of proceedings that you, you if you feel uh, some other redress is needed? No, I think, I think what should be addressed is the fact is that um, social services um, will screwed me and basically forced, it was a forced adoption with my two children, which I didn't stand a chance because I was like on the way to prison anyway. But it was a closed adoption and I was not allowed to send anything or see their pictures or anything like that. And when I got told I could send photographs, send cards, send letters, they never really actually got there. And they're still doing it from this day. I, I wrote a card to each one of the girls, sent it recorded delivery. And when I rang them up, they denied having it. Three weeks later, oh, we found it. And, I, and as my husband's looked through the files again, all the letters I sent the children are actually still in the box waiting to be sent from 20 years ago. Hang on a minute. So, so, so letters that you wrote thinking that they were going, going to, to be... Going to children. So they ended up, sent. But, they would, but they did end up back in your solicitor's office. Yes. I sent, the, I sent my letters and cards eventually to Paul Bacon. They were never sent. And I've, like I said, I've actually sent them to social services and they keep denying, they keep receiving them, but you can't deny recorded delivery. That's where they messed up. So your, your children were taken away as part of the, um, as part of the, uh, the whole proceeding? Yes. Um, so you've had no substantial or even um, inconsequential dealings with them for, for those 20 years? No, I haven't. They know that you're around. Yes, they do. Um, and it's been clear from some of the stuff that they're not, you know, they're not assured, if you like to use that word, um, still by their mother's innocence um, in any of the uh, of the circumstances. You know that because that's that's yeah. been out there. Um, if they saw you on this um, on this recording, um, and you had a chance to directly say something to them, you know, what what would that be? I'd say. I love all of you very much and I don't ever stop thinking about you despite the things that are going on and one day you'll realise how innocent I really am. And that's what you think the world will discover. We can't please everybody.